copyrighted program created by Rio Grande. Los Angeles County Sheriff's Office calling all cars. Attention all cars broadcast 289 regarding a forgery suspect. Be on the lookout for Roy Sherwood. Suspected of passing forged checks. This man is armed and dangerous. That's all. Rolls and clips. <laughs> by what it will do, how it makes your motor perform, a gallon of the radically new and different all-purpose Rio Grande crack is the biggest gallon of motor fuel sold in the West today. Only four quarts to the gallon, yes, but every drop contains twice as many ingredients as are found in ordinary gasoline. And the way these ingredients are combined in this equal-to-all-emergencies gasoline makes all-purpose Rio Grande Crack the answer to all the demands of the most exacting drivers on the highway. Before making this double-quality gasoline available to the general public, we purposely had it stand trial in police cars, ambulances, and other must-get-there public-serving equipment. And when the drivers of these cars literally raved about not only its amazing performance in every phase of driving, but its money-saving qualities as well, we lost no time in making all-purpose Rio Grande cracks available to every automobile driver in California. And the way many thousands of you folks have joined with the men who drive the most, who know the most about gasoline, in a wholesale acceptance of this great new motor fuel, is a glowing tribute, not only to your alertness, but to the genuine merit of all-purpose Rio Grande cracks, the most highly recommended gasoline sold in the West. Your next tank full is waiting for you at the nearest red and white Rio Grande station. The story we are to hear tonight has been taken from the criminal files of the William J. Burns International Detective Agency and from the confidential files of the Sheriff of Kings County and from the files of the Sheriff of Los Angeles County. We have as our guest tonight, Major Edmund L. Green of the Sheriff's Office, who will open our program. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. When one mentions bad check artists, one usually thinks of a mild sort of man who lives by his wits, or what he thinks is his wits, while he steals from other people by means of forged checks. Such a man is entirely witless if he thinks that he can long beat the law no matter whether it is the private investigator who starts on his trail, as is the case in our story tonight, or whether it is the law enforcement officer of a department such as ours, the result will always be the same. The criminal cannot win. Tonight we shall hear of a man who thought he could beat the law and how well he succeeded. His is another example of truth of the statement, crime of any sort cannot pay. Tonight begins with a terse statement taken from the file of Roy Smith, Kings County, number 15838, San Quentin, number 52524. On Saturday evening, June 25th, 1932, about 8 p.m., Bob Railsback drove his father's Studebaker sedan automobile to a parking place on Court Street within the city of Hanford and parked the car while he and some friends went to the show. He left the key in the automobile. The defendant, Roy Smith, who was sitting in the courthouse park nearby, stole the automobile and drove to Los Angeles. Thus, calmly and without elaboration, Kings County authorities began the recitation of the case against Roy Smith. The report continues. Mr. J.E. Sparks, deputy sheriff of this county, on Saturday, July 2nd, 1932, arrested the defendant when he drove up in the stolen automobile in front of a house in Southgate, California. Now, when this bird comes along, if he does, I'll grab him. We'll take the car he stole back to Hanford. Want me to drive this car or the stolen one? You'd better drive the car rails back lost. I'll take the bird who stole it back in this one. How'd you find out where the car was? A fellow who knew this guy, Smith, saw him get in the rails back car and drive off. We knew where Smith lived before he came to Hanford, so we figured he'd head back here. Look, 
There's a car stopping across the street. Is that the guy? I don't know, but I'll soon find out. You wait here. All right. Hey, you. Is your name Smith? Yeah. What do you want? I want you. Oh, is that so? What's on your mind? I'm an officer from Kings County. You're under arrest for grand theft auto. And that's the car you just drove up in. Oh, yeah? <laughs> well, I guess you've got the right guy, mister. When do we start back? Right now. We're going my car. My driver will take this one back. Uh, mind if I get my clothes together there in the house? Nope. But I'll go with you just in case. Oh, that's all right. You can trust me. Maybe. Hey, Joe. Yeah? Get in this Studebaker. You'll drive it back to Hanford. Okay, Mr. Sparks. We'll be right back. Got a pack some clothes. You follow us. Get in, Smith. Uh, look, uh, do you mind driving by my girl's house in Huntington Park? I want to tell her goodbye. Well, I guess there's no harm in that. Sure. Get in. Thank you. We're going to stop in Huntington Park, Joe. Keep us in sight. Nice weather we're having. Mm-hmm. Said it's hot up at Hanford. Little? Say, Smith, uh, what was the idea of stealing that car? You sure I stole it? You were driving it when I arrested you. That's pretty good evidence, isn't it? Well, I might have bought it. Stop stalling. What was the idea? Oh, I don't know. I was broke, needed money. Wanted to get to Los Angeles, and that looked like a good idea at the time. Didn't turn out so well, though, did it? I don't know. Maybe not. Uh, but this works, though. Where'd you get that gun? Out of my suitcase when you let me pack. Stop the car. Boy, you sure do want to get to San Quentin, Dad. Don't worry about me. I'm not going to San Quentin, but you're going to heaven if you don't do just what I tell you to. Okay. You got the drop on me. Let's get it over with. Get out. No. Tell that partner of yours to get out of his car. He's got a gun in my back, Joe. You better get out of the car. Okay, Mr. Sparks. Lock that car and bring me the key. You know you'll get caught eventually, Smith. Why do you add to your troubles? Listen, copper, I've heard that crime don't pay stuff before. Lay off. Here's the key to Rails back car. Thanks. You got a gun? Nope. Well, now I'll just take yours, Mr. Sparks, and I'll be on my way. <laughs> Deputy Sparks hailed the passing motorist and pursued the fleeing suspect into Huntington Park, where he lost the trail. Reporting the incident to the Los Angeles Sheriff's Office, Sparks returned to his own bailery. Several days later, Smith was located in the chief blooming house in Long Beach. Officers knocked on the door. Hope he's not as tough as Sparks said he was. He probably is. Who is it? Officers, open up. Let's see you, coppers. Come and get me. Gonna make trouble, I see. Wanna kick the door down? Get a face full of lead? Know any more jokes? No, it's your turn. You tell one. Smith, come out of there. Well, well, he wants to play. Okay, let him have it. Well, that was because another check came 
in on Monday, yesterday. A man who runs a beer parlor up the street came in with a check for $18, signed with the same signature as the $50 item, or this one. Mm-hmm. We called our depositor, and he came over, took a look at the checks, and said they were both forgeries. I thought he'd already okayed this one. He had over the phone. But when he came in, it developed that he had issued a $50 check on the 13th of December. Naturally, he thought it was that check which had come in. Uh, who did he give this $50 check to? To a fellow named Gibbs. He's a friend of this Kramer. And Kramer was pres- present when the uh, check was issued. And obviously, this Kramer used the genuine check to copy the signature. That's what we figured. However... We got in another check this morning from a local grocery made out to Leonard Mark and signed Frank Boyd. The grocer had already cashed it, but there are no such persons in town. Uh, who'd you say this fellow worked for? For Mr. Strong. He ran the filling station for Strong down the next block. Thanks. Uh, I think I'll go down and have a talk with him. Uh, now, Mr. Strong, you say this fellow Kramer worked for you on a percentage basis? That's right, and his name's not Kramer. It's Roy Sherwood. Sherwood, eh? Yeah. And you haven't seen him since Saturday night. That's right, too. And believe me, I'd like to get my hands on him. Why? He ran up a flock of bills on me. Uh-uh. Charged a lot of stuff to me and sold it here in the station and kept the money. Any idea where he might be? All I know is he left this note saying he was going back to his old job in Alhambra. You let me have that note, will you? I'll have a talk with these people. I might check with the high drill people. He worked there once, so he claimed. Okay, thanks. I'll do that. Norton now began a canvas of the man's references given at the time of his employment with the Hydro Company. Checking with the police department and the sheriff's office, he found no record of the man, now known as Roy Sherwood. Teletype messages sent to the Department of Motor Vehicles in Sacramento brought word. Automobile registered in name of Roy Sherwood. but I haven't seen him since last July. He used to live on West 83rd Street in Los Angeles, I believe. Thanks. I'll check that. Checking the address given by the former employer, Norton again drew a blank. Meantime, he continued running down other addresses, previously secured. In South Pasadena... Have any idea where I could find a man by the name of Roy Sherwood who's supposed to have lived here? No, I haven't the slightest idea. We've only lived here six months. Thanks. Mr. Parks, I understand you know Roy Sherwood? Why, yes, I used to know a fellow by that name. Any idea where I might locate him? No, I haven't seen Roy in two years, I guess it is now. Might try Les Hilton over on West 83rd. Thanks, I'll do that. Uh, by the way, I believe this fellow spent some time in the pen. San Quentin, I believe. Okay, thanks. Norton at last felt that this was a definite lead. But checking with the sheriff's office, he found no record of Roy Sherwood ever having been sent to prison. Early the following morning, he again contacted Mr. Strong, owner of the filling station where Sherwood had worked. Heard anything about Sherwood, Mr. Strong? Nope, nothing from him. His girlfriend was around looking for him last night, though. Girlfriend? Uh, any idea where she lives? Yep, I got her address around here somewhere. Yeah, here it is. This place on Center Street in San Pedro. What's her name? You got me there. All I know is what Sherwood called her. He used to call her Toots. That should be simple, to find a girl called Toots. You're just about like the needle in the haystack, I guess. Just about. This dame uh, said she got a telegram from Sherwood Tuesday. Well, at least that's something to work on. You're welcome to it. I'm uh, trying to check up on a telegram that was delivered to this address. Center Street, eh? To whom was the telegram sent? Toots. Toots who? I wouldn't know. Well, that's a little difficult, if you know what I mean. I think I do, and I can sympathize with you, but if you can, I'd like to know where the telegram came from that was delivered to that address. Well, we couldn't possibly find that out without knowing the name of the person receiving the message. And all I know is Toots. (laughs) I'm afraid I can't help you. 
You might check the city directory. Here's a copy. occupied by Miss Yancey. Well, let's take a look at our file. You keep a record of all deliveries from this office? Yes, sir. Well, this is rather important that we find where the telegram came from. Mm, I don't find anything addressed to a Yancey. Uh, you're sure? Afraid so. Well, that's that. I guess there's nothing to do but spend some time watching the 100 block of South Center Street. That same day, Norton saw two girls enter the house at the address he was watching. Immediately, he rang the doorbell. Yes? Are you good? What's the big idea? Well, you haven't answered my question. Listen, mister, I don't know you, and I'm not interested in your conversation. Oh, wait a minute. I'm looking for Roy. Roy who? Roy Sherwood. Never heard of him. You're sure you didn't get a telegram from him last Tuesday? Who took... Hmm. No. No, I don't know any Roy Sherwood. Well, maybe you knew him by some other name. Just the same, I want to talk to you about him. Do you mind if I come in? No. Come on in. You live here alone? No. Girlfriend lives with me. Where is she? In the next room. Say, who are you anyway? I'm an investigator, and I'm looking for Sherwood on a bum check wrap. If you want to keep out of trouble, you'll play the game with me and help us out. Oh, what makes you so sure I know this Sherwood guy? Well, in the first place, I know his girlfriend was looking for him earlier this week at the place where he works. She told his boss she'd received a telegram from Sherwood. That's how I got your address. How do you know I'm the girl who was looking for him? Well, if you're not touch, you're wasting a lot of valuable time trying to hold out on me. <laughs> you're barking up the wrong tree, mister. Okay, lady, have it your way. But if you change your mind, here's my number. You can reach me at either one of those phones. Thanks, big boy. I can't wait. <laughs> Time, additional checks were being received bearing the forged signatures of depositors at the Bomita Bank. Norton arranged for the sheriff's office and a complaint charging Sherwood with grand theft was issued. Early next morning, Norton received a telephone call. This is Norton. This is Toots. Yes? If you'll come down here, I'll give you the telegram and the letters I got from Roy. Why this sudden change of heart? I got to thinking about being mixed up in this rap he's in it. I don't want any part of it. Okay. Where was the telegram sent from? He was in Joplin, Missouri, with a friend of his. The same bird he used to run around with out here? Yeah, he's the one. He's with Roy now. Okay, Toots, thanks for the information. I'll be around to talk to you later. Sheriff Baldwin. Forgery detail, please. Thank you. Hello, Carlton. Yes? Uh, this is Jim Norton. Are you sure a complaint has been issued on the Sherwood monkey? Absolutely. Located him yet? I think he's in Missouri. Uh, if he's back there, the DA will go get him. Almost a week had elapsed since the first of a long series of bad checks had been coming in, all obviously the work of Roy Sherwood. Finally, Norton felt he had a definite lead. He conferred with Deputy Sheriff Willie and Pennywitz. Now, here's what I've found out so far. As soon as this bird decided to make his killing, he started to split a bad check. All the banks that have cashed them so far are members of the association. That's why I'm sticking with the case. Now, this girlfriend in San Pedro is not telling me everything she knows. Where is this bird now? Mm -hmm. That penny with old boy is what I'd like to know. He sent this toots dame a telegram from Joplin, Missouri. He's had time to be any place by now. Uh, Willie here thinks it might help if we talk to the girl. Uh, she knew you were a private investigator, but she might be a little scared of us. Well, you've got a point there. But we're overlooking something important. You see, I had a talk with this Hilton woman, the wife of one of the fellows Sherwood gave as a reference, and uh, she tells me he's done time under the name of Smith, Roy Smith. Well, let's see if he's got a record. Yeah, it won't take but a minute. Carton. Let's see if we have a record on Roy Smith. Okay. Uh, did this woman know what Smith's charge was? No, she said it was something serious and that he'd been out only a couple of years. Here you are, Penny. What? Thanks. Hmm. I'll say it must have been serious. He served four and a half years, according to this. When was he sent up? Well, he was arrested by Los Angeles County officers July 1932. 
Released to Hanford, California, July 7th. Sent to San Quentin from Kings County, July 14th. One to ten years. Grand theft. Say, wait a minute. I remember this case. Yeah? Yeah, some of our boys picked this monkey up in Long Beach on a complaint from Kings County officers. I believe he pulled a gun and took a car away from a deputy from up there. Got the drop on the officer, it seems. We're going to kill him. Oh, sure, I remember him. The boys blasted him out of a rooming house down in Long Beach. He thought he was tough, wanted to shoot it out with the boys. Boy, he's a big guy. Six feet, five and three quarters. Twenty-nine years old. Weight, 190 pounds. Well, with all that dope, it shouldn't be hard to pick him up. I've got a hunch he's back here. Let's get out to San Pedro and talk to Toots. You can call me Thelma. Okay. Now, Thelma, we want the truth. You've been giving us the runaround long enough about this bird, Smith. I've told you the truth. I don't know where he is. Didn't I phone this fellow and tell him all I knew? Didn't I give him the letter and the telegram I got from Roy? Oh, that's all right, too, but you know something else. How do you figure that? Now, by the way, you've been answering our questions for the last hour. You haven't given a straightforward answer since we got here. Say, what is this, a third degree? No, we just want the straight dope on what you know about this fellow Smith or Sherwood or whatever you call him. But I've told you all I know. Look, maybe we should explain it to you again. When we catch Smith and it comes out that you knew where he was or that you withheld information that would have helped us catch him, uh, you can be sent to jail for aiding a criminal to escape. Is that on the level? Listen, lady, you want me to quote you the section of the penal code that says it's on the level? No, never mind. I don't want to get into trouble. Well, then tell us the truth. Okay. Take it easy. Where's Smith? I don't know. I really oh, don't know. Oh, for the love of Mike. Are we going to start all that again? Wait a minute. I don't know where he is now. But I saw him last night in L.A. Where? When? I saw him at his hotel down on 5th Street, close to Los Angeles Street. He was going to stay there last night and check out today. All right, Thelma. We'll soon find out if you're telling us the truth. If you are, okay. But don't you phone to this monkey or tip him off that we're after him, or you'll be in hot water clear up to here. Don't worry. I won't talk. Yeah, we'll keep in touch with you. Thanks, lady. Think she'll keep quiet? Sure, like a clam. She's scared. Let's get to that hotel and get that to the manager. Smith might come back. <laughs> While deputies Penny Witt and Willie checked with the manager of the hotel named by the girl, Norton conferred with the manager of the bank, making the original report. Heard anything more about this Sherwood fellow, Mr. Wood? Yes. Another check came in through the San Gabriel Bank for $36. Made out to Roy Sherwood and signed with Mr. Conn's name again. So he is back. And he lost the bank? No. He cashed the check at a store on Valley Boulevard. Will the manager prosecute? Well, didn't, didn't say. Uh, did he give an address? He gave 912 West 3rd Street, but I doubt if that's any good. So do I. Uh, incidentally, a fellow I happen to know told me that he knows this fellow. What's his name and where does he live? Well, he said he didn't want to get mixed up in this. Well, what he wants is entirely beside the point. We've got to follow down every lead we can get. Well, I don't know. Now, look, I'll keep this informant of yours out of the picture, but we've got to get your wood. Okay, I'll write his name and address down for you. You can talk to him. Now, uh, by the way, what's this fellow so afraid of, anyway? He claims the Sherwood fellow is a tough hombre. <laughs> You're telling me. He's always packing a big gun around with him. Got the drop on a deputy sheriff from Kings County a few years ago and really fixed things up. Had a rap in San Quentin for his trouble. Crime never pays, eh? Yeah, something like that. You'll find that man whose name I gave you knows our forger pretty well. Well, we'll see if we can't put a stop to some of his artistic efforts. Norton interviewed the informant, but secured the hole beyond a promise to notify officers if the suspect should again come to his house. Norton gave this new information to Pennywit and Willie and returned to keep watch on the house on Center Street. Meanwhile, Deputy Pennywit received a telephone call at his home. Pennywit speaking. This is Carlton, Penny. That hotel you told me about just phoned in. The fellow you're looking for on that check case has been back there. Yeah? Is he there now? Sent a bellboy to tail him. He got in his car at the people's garage and headed south. Going back 
to San Pedro, probably. Uh, where's Willie? I couldn't locate him. Uh, he's gone to a meeting of the peace officers. Norton's uh, down at San Pedro, staking out on Sherwood's girlfriend. Looks like it's up to you. Yeah, looks that way. Well, guess I'll run down to Lomita, pick up the man Norton talked to, and take him along to identify Sherwood. Okay, good luck. Let us know how you come up. <laughs> this fellow Sherwood, are you? And how? That bird will shoot your eye teeth out on the slightest excuse. I doubt if he's so bad. Well, let that baby face of his fool you. I've never seen him. Looks just like that picture you showed me. Ah, uh, he couldn't be so tough. Hey, listen, that baby's got a gun that long. But a barrel alone is at least a foot long. <laughs> That's a pretty big gun. Well, maybe not quite a foot. But it is a big gun. Did he carry it with him all the time? Keeps it in the side pocket of his car when he's driving, but sticks it in the waistband of his pants when he's out of the car. Yeah? Well, I'll keep my eyes open. Well, guess we might as well drive over to Cherwood's girlfriend, see if he's been around there. Hey, wait a minute. See that car up ahead there? You mean that Ford sedan? Yeah, that's the one. Sure I see it. What about it? That looks like the car Sherwood was driving the other day when he came by my place. Uh, is that Sherwood in the car? I'm not certain that's his car. Well, make sure. We can't be running decent people into the curb in the hope that it will be somebody we're looking for. That looks an awful lot like Sherwood's car, all right. Don't you know the license number? No. Look on that card stuck in the corner of the windshield there. It's written on that. This card? Yeah. Here's a number. 9H4433. Is that it? That's it. That's the number on the car up ahead. That's Sherwood's car, then. Hey, I went out. I don't want to be in the car when you arrest him. What's the matter with you? I tell you, he's tough. He'd shoot me in a minute if he knew I'd talk to you officers. Ah, forget it. He won't shoot anybody. Let me out, I tell you. I don't want any part of this. Huh. You've got a yellow streak down your back a foot wide. That's all right. I'd rather be a live coward than a dead hero. Let me out. Okay, fella. Have it your own way.
narrator, Frederick Lindsay, bidding you good night for Rio Grande. Thank you.